is Box Tickets NI. We are here, it's Fight Day in Belfast. Delighted to be joined with Jerry Byrne, obviously not in the context of obviously your own shows. I think it's our first interview we've done in Belfast as well, so welcome to my humble abode. Thanks, Steve. I appreciate that, Pat. Um, obviously, with last week's show, I think it sort of got to the stage where after the fights, we sort of got kicked out. It yeah, was sort of yeah. venue, so we, we sort of couldn't do a recap on the show, but obviously your fourth show of the year last weekend, um, obviously just, just obviously speak on that. Like, I thought it was a really, really good card, really, really matched, well card. Um, there was really one stoppage on the card, which, which in itself shows you how, how good of a standard the card was when people was getting value for money. Yeah, well, we've set out that I think, I think we've got four stoppages in five cards. I, I've set out from the from the get go saying I want the lads in tough fights all the, all the time. It's not fifty fifty fights, not you know fights that they should lose or anything like that. They're more the tough level, the top level journeymen. I pay that little bit extra for the better level journeymen, the ones that are coming to test them, the ones that are making sure they're working, and I don't want to go in against lads that I get knocked over after a round or two because it just doesn't benefit them, you know what I mean? That's why we're using the good level journeymen all the time and in theory then it's making the cards more entertaining. I've had people talk more about journeymen at times saying, oh, Jesus, your man such and such fought was brilliant and he was a great opponent and I think that's testament to the matchmaking that we're doing and we're going to continue to do that so there won't be easy fights. Some people's coaches and uh, managers are asking for certain opponents and I'm just going, no, they won't be on my cards because they're looking for opponents that are going to fall over. But what's the point? It makes sense in a way as well, doesn't it? Because like you know, I think I spoke to Peter Carr previously. I think after this fight last week, he was sort of saying they don't want easy fights because if you get an easy fight, you don't know your level, you don't know what you need to improve and develop on. And and for you as well, as a promoter, if you obviously are matching fighters in a certain way, you can sort of in your head know where you can plan for them the next time around and. Where you could potentially, because let's face it, ninety-five percent of fighters will say, "I want to be a world champion," and they'll never be it. Yeah. So unless you can test them in the right way, mm. there's no point giving them handy, easy blowovers. Well, see, the problem is, and we've we've seen it for years on all the shows, the big promotions across the water, and even in America and things like that, a bit tougher in America, but more so in the UK, where you get a lad, he comes out of the Olympics, he's a top, top level talent, and all of a sudden his first five, six fights as a pro are against terrible opposition. You know, and in my opinion, it sends them backwards. And I just think they're ten and all after a couple of years. But in theory, they're not really to the standard of what ten and all should be. Whereas I personally feel that the fighters that we're bringing up through and now, they may not be as technically gifted coming into the sport as some of these G Team GB or Irish um, elite boxers are. But by the time they get to ten and all, they'll have caught up because they're doing a lot of learning on the job and. That's what this is about. The whole thing is about them learning on the job. Yeah, they might not be going in and blowing lads out and looking great with knockout reels and things like that, but that'll get you so far. And you can blow up your Instagram and you can have your Instagram looking like you're a superstar and, and the whole lot. But behind it all, you know yourself, you're not a superstar. You haven't even gone in against a top level journeyman, you know, that's testing you. Peter Carr last week was a prime example. Jordan Graham, who I personally believe is possibly the best journeyman in between England and Ireland anyway, definitely. I think he's by far the best. He can win 90% of the fights if he wants. And last week, he asked me, he said, what's the story with this kid? I said, yeah, he, he, he wants proper fights. I said, he's not here just, you know, for a walk around or anything like that. He goes, oh, perfect, no problem at all. And Jordan put, test, put a test to Peter, and Peter learned more last week than he would have in five, six, seven handy journeyman fights. And that's what it's all about. I believe when the time our lads get to eight and 10 and all, um, on our shows, not my lads, but the lads on the shows get to 8 to 10 and 0, they'll be real 8 to 10 and 0 fighters and they'll be ready to go and take scalps uh, off the prospects that the likes of Matchroom, Wazer Man, um, Queensbury and that, and Boxer and that are bringing through because I think they'll be educated better in the program. When you, when you look back on the card, like, what would you probably say was the, the best part of the highlight of the card? I guess what was the way with Shane obviously McConnell's done a knockout performance, but I'd probably say the best performance in the card maybe last week, maybe Cain Lewis. Cain Lewis was exceptional last week. Yeah, Cain is exceptional. Cain is, Cain is a hidden a hidden gem um, that I'm trying to get out there. And I think we're doing a good job with him. And we're building Cain nicely. And yes, we want the Celtic title for that. 
a point five, we just couldn't get an opponent. No one in Ireland wants to fight him. The offers have gone out. No one's coming to the table, you know. Um, so we had to get. We had another opponent, um, Stefan Nicolai, um, but he got stopped in Dubai the week before. So we had to quickly change, and we got in Jake Pollard, who doesn't get stopped. Tough, good journeyman. But Kane had him on the floor as well with a body shot. So it just showed you again the level Kane's at. Another fight, and again, a lot of the fights on the card are excellent. I thought Paul Lunum was really good as well. I thought Glenn was brilliant. Um, again, not just because he's my brother, but Gratty has caused problems. Like he was on the show, he's been on a lot of our shows, but he was on against Graham McCormick, who's a seasoned pro, an ex Celtic champion, has been in a lot of domestic fights, a good seasoned pro, and a good lad with a lot of experience. And we've seen the problems he caused Graham. Like he got a, he got a draw off Graham that night. Glenn f- was a 3 and 0 novice getting in McGrathy. Graham is also two weight classes above Glenn. And Graham, or Glenn got in, and I thought he gave a boxing lesson to Grathy. And after the fight, Grathy came to me and said, he's very good, he's very strong, he broke his rib. Glenn broke his rib and that. So I just thought the performance level from Belfast back to Dublin for Glenn was chalk and cheese. It showed that he went away and he learned because in Belfast he came out of the blocks flying the first two rounds, looked really good in the first two rounds, but blew his gasket and had to dig deep and come out of the fifth and sixth round to get his win. But I thought on Friday night he showed levels of boxing. I, showed, I think he showed everyone that he can box. And he's gone away and he's learned how to box and how to pace himself over the distance. I thought he, I thought he showed that as well. But there was other, I, th- I thought the card was really good. I thought, Sean Murray had a nightmare, obviously, with Kemsky because he just does what he does. And Sean wouldn't be as experienced as Lee Reyes was. Lee Reyes manhandled Kemsky, played with him, and beat, beat him up. Whereas Sean hadn't got that experience that Lee had to how to keep his distance and how not to dive in and keep the distance. Like Kemsky ducks his head, you just take a step back and you whip, whip in an uppercut and he'll stop ducking fairly quick if you keep doing that to him. But Sean was rushing in and punching over him and it was, it was messy. But again, and Dominic done what he done to Sean with six days out. It ruled out us getting any opponents in from the UK. So we had to do what we had to do. And we got in Kemsky so we could save him fighting. But I did. I, I felt that there was a lot of good uh, performances on the card. Yeah, I know. He obviously was in a great fight as well. Like, that was a sort of a fight that was touch and go, sort of. Which, which one? Cheyenne O'Neill. Cheyenne O'Neill, yeah. Oh, look, I, as well, yeah, so I, like, I thought that was a great card. A great fight again. I think Cheyenne learned a lot in that fight because... I personally thought it was a very close fight. Could have went either way, in my opinion. Delighted that Cheyenne got the win. Um, and I think Cheyenne will go away from that and go, OK, I probably need to work a little bit more on my engine because it looked after a couple of rounds like she tired. And Cheyenne has done phenomenal since um, having her baby and coming back. And when you're losing the kind of weight you are, especially after having a baby, because your whole body's changed, your conditioning has changed completely, there's a lot of work that had to be done there. And that fight could have been a step too early for her. You know, um, and it looked like she tired after a couple of rounds, and then she had to dig deep in the end to get her win, and she done brilliantly. So she'll probably go away from that and go right. I need to work more on conditioning, and not the boxing maybe in the next camp. You know what or I mean? Maybe less on. I think now it's over thirty kilo loss. So I yeah. think now it's maybe going to be less weight loss. Balance it out a bit. Yeah. Probably more more boxing, obviously style. A hundred percent. But it was a, again another fight that she came through. Could have been a banana skin, but came through it, got a win and will only benefit from that. Because again, if she could him the girl that she blow bowled over in a round or two, she wouldn't have known that her empty her tank had emptied early and that she wouldn't have went through that tough that she had to dig deep and come back in the second half of the fight. So again another learning fight. Now we did match that for her uh, Robbie and Sam I'm sure dealt with the matching on that. But again it was great to have it on the card because it just showed again another good 50-50 fight. We were sort of sitting there with Paul Lunan. Lunan obviously, I'm getting the headline, obviously a second pro fight, I guess, in some ways, is sort of you repaying the faith that he's had and, and, and signing him with you. But he didn't get he didn't get an opportunity to start. He'd probably start in his debut a wee bit slower. He, he didn't have that, and sort of maybe at times where we sort of go and maybe get a wee bit too red, miss someone to be involved, whereas we normally know he's sort of on the back foot and sort of can pick them off. But he was, he was having to sort of engage to keep your man off him. Yeah, I, I was, if there was any footage of me, I was top of my voice screaming into the ring to tell him just to go back to his boxing. I like that in a fighter. I, I love a fighter that says, oh, you want to fight, I'll fight. But when you have the ability and the skills that Paul has, I feel against a fighter like that, that's dangerous. He just swings big shots. You know, I feel that Paul 
he should have just stood in his boxing, stood in his boxing, and just boxed him, boxed him, made him look silly, and got out of there with a nice comfortable win. Because any of them waiver shots, it doesn't matter how good you are, technically talented, any of them waiver shots land in the right spot, you could have a banana skin. Um, we knew, I knew what the opponent was about. I had that opponent picked weeks in advance. Um, we were trying to get another opponent, but we couldn't, but I had him in the reserve all the way through because it's hard at them weights to get the right opponents. Um, and it was an opponent that I know his team weren't 100% confident on because they were worried that he'd come in a bit heavy and things like that. I knew he, um, Joe Parties looks after that, that match for me and Joe's very honest and straight. Um, he said there'd be no problem on the weight, so I knew we had him there, we couldn't get an alternative opponent, and I knew what we got with him. And I felt what we got with him was, again, another massive learning fight for Paul, because I'm sure he went away and go, I don't want to be getting hit like that in fights, because he is technically brilliant, so he can just get in and get out, get around that ring, look good, and keep racking up his wins. So. I guess the good thing with having a newborn child as well, is he doesn't want a newborn child to be seen with black eyes, so yeah. it's another example there. That well again, it's punishment, you don't want to be taking punishment. Although we're putting lads into good fights, every fight we put the lads into, there's reasons for them, you know, and there's a, there, it's all about learning and there's a, there's a reason why they're fighting, these lads are fighting, and they shouldn't be getting punishment in any of the fights because they're, they're well capable of winning all the fights, but if they let their guard down or if they slip or if they make mistakes, they will be punished. But the whole point is, don't make mistakes, don't slip and don't let your guard down. Get in and do what you do best and that's boxing. Just keep boxing, don't get hit, take no punishment and out of the ring with a win because all the fights, although they're tough journeymen and good level journeymen, they're all, a diff they're all different types of journeymen for different reasons, different opponents and the reason is because people are in different stages of their careers. But my thing is, the fights that we're matching, the boys shouldn't be getting hurt. The boys should be winning. They should be winning good and looking good winning, unless they make mistakes. Peter Carr could have won that fight against Graham a lot easier, but he drew it into a fight, got into middle distance, close range distance, and said, come on. So what was Jordan going to do? He was going to come on and have that fight. Peter could have boxed him, boxed him, and looked good and boxed him, and you know, occasionally got in and landed a couple of heavy shots, got back out, back in his boxing. But he didn't. Peter's a fighter and he wants to fight. And he had a lad in front of him that was willing to fight back with him. So Peter loved that. But again, that's where the banana skins can happen because his opponent was brought in because Peter wasn't going to get him out of there. And if he did, it was a big, big statement. But he was getting to show I oh, can actually box as well as punch. But his head got the better of him and he said, I'm going to try punch him out. So in my opinion, he made a mistake doing that because he took punishment he shouldn't took. And look, he got tested, he got his chin tested and he has a chin because Jordan did land a couple of solid left hooks on him and Peter didn't budge. So that's a good thing to show, but if he hadn't got a chin, it could have been a big banana skin. So again, different fights at the right time, for the right fights at the right times is why we match the opponents the way we match them. Did you see Shane McConnell's debut in Waterford? Obviously you were fighting the same car, but obviously he made a statement in his debut, obviously stopping a durable journeyman and Seamus Devlin never yeah. got stopped. Like, I was obviously, you know, that was a very, very dangerous fight and you, and you probably you haven't got the credit, you probably deserved a, a match in that fight. He, uh, Fabrizio obviously beat Paul Ryan. Mm. Um, did then Shane McConnell obviously get the open revenge for him? Like, he could have asked for a better start in professional boxing. Probably in some ways, though, I guess you don't get paid for overtime. It's 2 0 with two stoppages, and both of them obviously have been very short fights as well. Like, is, is that obviously, you know, you start now going, we've got, a, we've got a hidden gem here that, you know, can go under the radar a wee bit in the fact that he, he's not big for social media, but. You tell him an opponent, he'll say yes, but he's coming fight. The problem is the fact he's knocking everyone out so quick. So there's no one going to take a gamble on him. Like, Matthew Mark going to bring up and say, here, can we fight Shane McConnell? One of their prospects is not getting put in with Shane McConnell because he's just, he knocked him out. He has ferocious power. He can take a punch. That's the big thing. I used to try him with him. I've sparred him. And I've watched him spar him with Paul Ryan and that. And I've seen him punch. But I've also seen him taking punches. I've seen him and Paul Ryan go to war on a spar and then take serious punches, but stand there. So when it was actually, he said to me, what about the guy that uh, knocked out Paul? And I said, are you sure? Because you've been out for a while. I said, you know, are you sure? And he says, yeah, I spoke to Pete and he's happy enough as well about it. So I said, right, okay, leave it with me. So we went and made the match. That match was made, that was the first match made in the card. And uh, again, he just done what he does, you know? He's not the most technically gifted boxer, but for pro boxing, his style is smooth and he obviously packs a big punch because you don't put people to sleep like that unless you pack punch. 
he said straight away, you fight anyone, he wants to fight anyone. He wants out of the journeyman scene straight away. He wants domestics. Um, it was whispered about him and Peter Carr. He said straight away, yeah, Peter has to be next. Uh, Peter's next, I'll fight him next. Um, I don't think Peter wants it. We asked Peter, Peter wasn't too pushed on it. He's more thinking of Shane, but Shane's gone a different road for now, so that won't materialise until maybe end of the year or next year or whatever like that. But uh, he's open to fighting anybody. Um, I think he's, he, fighter, isn't it? he's away in September, so he won't be on in October, so we'll be looking to get him out in November or the end of October, maybe November. But again, you're probably going to have to bring in maybe a Jordan Graham to see can we get him rounds. And if he was to stop Jordan, I think you've got a big problem on your hands in the fact that he's going to probably hurt everybody that he gets in the ring with, but then for matching him as well. Because I know Dale Arrowsmith was supposed to be his opponent in Waterford. And I was chatting to Dale and Dale said, thank God it was changed on the night. He said, I do not want to be in with him. He said, Seamus Devlin said he'd never been hit with by Anton like it before. And Seamus was working under Dale at the time. And the next day he just rang and said, nah, that, that kid, hit, kid hit me yesterday with something I've never been hit with. He says, I don't want to feel that again. And he retired. So that's saying something, you know. Um, so yeah, I don't know, maybe a Jordan Graham or someone next, someone like that that's going to bring him rounds. Now the lads have said that they have, Dale has a lad, a super middleweight lad there that is supposed to be a, a major handful in the UK. Um, he said he's available for October. But the guy that fights a Jordan tonight? That could be him. And he said that he was available if he wanted him. He's a handful. So, but he's not around in October. So I'd say it could be Jordan. Was he straight after? I was, I was on the road home from Dublin and obviously you announced obviously your fifth show of this year and obviously your sixth show in, in total. And obviously we've, we've had the first sort of taste of it, but from what obviously he's sort of been teasing and I know you'd obviously like to tease things out, which is good. Um, obviously, probably going to be the best show yet. Obviously, it's going to be headline. I'm working sure I word this rightly. Um, Declan Gerdy versus... Sen and Kelly, Sen and Kelly versus Declan Gerdy, because yeah. they're both JB Promotions yeah. fighters. What a fight. Yeah, we were, look, at, we set out in last November how many debutants did we have. All the fighters are young, they're only new fighters, you have to build them. Um, we can't just have Irish title fight after Irish title after Irish title fight headlining cards all the time. So people had to be patient, and we have to be patient, because all these lads are only starting their careers and coming up in their careers. And we have some more experienced lads that like to deco on that. But like even Senna was only four or five and oh when, when he started with us and that. So again, he wasn't ready for Irish titles and things. But this year's plan for Senna was Celtic title and Irish title fight. He's done the first one. Now this is the second one. But they're all starting to move along. Matthew Tindall's now five and oh, Glenn's now four and oh. So this time next year, them lads will be all 10, 12 and oh. And that's where you'll see a, a really big domestic scene. And we'll have a lot of the fighters going against each other. And there's no problem there, you know? So, but again, patience had to be waited. Now it's time. Now it's time to let a couple go. You know, Sean Murray has wanted to go from the get-go. He's had a great start to his career, in my opinion, bar obviously the Kemsky fight. Um, but again, it was another test he had to come through, you know. Um, so, Deco, it was Senan and Kane, or and David Ryan was the plan at 140 pounds. Out of the three or four fights we were looking to make, I, myself and Ian discussed, that was supposed to be the easiest one to make. Um, it just couldn't come off. I've been, it's been going on since a week before the show, nearly three weeks, and it's back and forth. And I understand there's, Dave was saying the Fridays don't suit them and the whole lot. We couldn't get the Saturday. We could get it, but we couldn't have the changing rooms and things like that. And it was a bit of a nuisance it was. You had to be out of the venue earlier and all that. In my opinion, he won us the Celtic title fight on a Friday. You know, He was getting a purse for this fight and then percentage of tickets. So I'd fight for an Irish title at five o'clock in the morning on a Wednesday if I had to, it wouldn't bother me in the slightest. Because to me, to be champion of my country means more than any day of the week or who's there to watch me, I don't care. You know what I mean? It was just too much back and forward. And Ian was doing his best to get it done. I had spoke to Ian every day of the week and I was constantly having to text any update and day, if any update, is there any update, is there any update? Because I want this fight done. I wanted the main, main card announced. I want to give the lads enough time to start selling their tickets. I want no hiccups like the last show. I learned a lot of mistakes in the last show. A lot of stuff that we won't make again. I wanted to get good solid matches and I just, it was too much of back and forth and back and forth. And then I was sitting down, I was just going through a few things and I was just, it just like a, a trick. I was like, Senan had mentioned Deco mentioned before. Interview, mentioned interview. I mean, yeah, and I was that, like. Um, obviously they're friends and everything else, but 
and give us sort of wind it up was going, you know what, I fight Deco. Yeah, and it was just that that flicked into my head. I was in the car and it flicked into my head and I went. So I just thought about it and I said, hmm, that's another option. So I spoke to them both, and both of them straight away, yeah, no problem. No problem. There wasn't even a mention of money. It was, yeah, I'd be up for that. Tenant said straight away, well, look, I'd, I'd prefer to be, I'd rather Dave Ryan. He said that was the fight of the kind of thought was going to happen. I vacated the title for Dave to fight for it, that if he won it, he fought me for the Irish title. He said I wouldn't have vacated my belt if that wasn't the case. Well, he did, and that's what happened. And he just said, yeah, but I'll do it. There was no mention of money. There was no mention of the day of the week. It was, yeah, I'll fight. Then I said, we'll do it on October 4th, and then we discussed money, and done. No problem. Deco was away, he was coming home, and I just said to him, What's up? he said, yeah, look, I'll, I'll be into that. Yeah, he said, no problem at all. I said, any more holidays? He said, no, no, my summer's over. I'll be in the gym tomorrow. And done. So we just quickly got a quick promotional video done up, and got it out there, and that's the main event. It'd be Deco versus Senan. Uh, I know. Senan versus Deco? Yeah, well, that's uh, Deco was on to me. He wanted, he, I think he wasn't happy with the video, because in the video, I think it was, the, there was a bit more about Senan and things in it. but. You're going to get that with two fighters, you know what I mean? But again, the boat lads, Deco's a personal friend of mine. We go back years, like years, 10 years, 12 years. And I trained every day of the week with Senan for over a year. So, I've, and I've managed him and I've looked after him for the last seven, eight months. And I have a relationship with him as well. But boat lads get on with each other. So there's not going to be any spy. But then on the other side of the coin, boat lads want to be number one in their country. Senan still has aspirations to go back to 140. But he's waited. Like, how hard it was to get him a Celtic title. Couldn't get a fight. Couldn't get Dave Ryan, wasn't eligible at the time. Couldn't, we tried to get the Ray Moyle fight, couldn't happen. We tried Danny Keaton, couldn't happen. You know, we just, we were going around in circles for the Celtic title. We ended up bringing in Jay Tinklin, which cost a lot of money to get him in. Done that, he wins the title. He then says, right, can't get an Irish title. Right, I'll vacate it. Let the lads fight for it. If Dave was to win it, I'm, he can fight me, even if Dave was to lose it. Well, he's eligible for it, he just needs to get a quick win. So that was his, tin behind, his, his thinking behind it. So we done that. And then again, we're back to a situation where he'd nobody to fight for the Irish title. So I think he's just shown a real boxer, a man in him, that he said, you know what, I'll step up and fight at the weight above. And he said to me, when I win this one, I want to go back and win it at 140 as well. I said, yeah, no problems at all. Now I know Dylan and um, Owen are fighting tonight, and we had discussed that the winner would potentially fight Deco for the Irish title at welterweight. So now my thing would be if that if the winner of that fight wants to fight for the Irish title, well they'll fight the winner. They can talk to talk to me about fighting the winner and I'm sure we can negotiate where that takes place and all that stuff. So that option is still there, nothing has changed. But again the two lads have showed that credit to, credit to both of them. There is uh, another fight as well that uh, I'll announce now on the, to the thing, um, to your camera, will be upon pending approval from the BUI, um, Robbie Bourke will fight Graham McCormick. That fight has been agreed by both parties and that will also be on the card on the night. Um, it's gone to the BUI, um, I'm just waiting for a confirmation for that to come back over. Can you, can you set the, the boundaries of that as the, the loser retires? Is it like a, oh, sort of like a retirement sort of fight? I can't retires? say. I can't say that. I, like, and, and I hope nobody will take any disrespect oh. from that, but obviously the fact is, we're both getting on a wee bit, and, and, and I'm friendly with both of them, but obviously we know Robbie obviously is going to retire in this year. Graham says he's only having a couple more fights, so you know, maybe one sort of well, stipulation. Well, my, my thing would be, in, on that fight, um, I think it's a good fight. I think it's a good fight. I think Graham has the experience. You know, he's been the distance a long time. He's, he's fought a lot more fights than Borky. I think Borky's probably a little bit fresher, maybe, because he hasn't had that many fights. I think it's a good fight. Um, obviously, I'll be backing my man to win the fight. And please God, the winner could maybe fight for a Celtic title afterwards. That would be maybe a, a swan song for them, a final bow out on that, because both have said they're kind of finishing up this year or whatever. So, but again, that's not up to me to make a decision on that. Like I can only advise uh, my fighter, and I've, he, my fighter came to me and asked for this fight, so I went and made the fight. You know what I mean? Um, I just asked me, "Are you sure that's the fight you want? Yeah, you happy enough? Yeah, grand, okay." And I went and made the fight. So when the fight's over, I'll discuss what's next from. Please God, it's a win, and we move on, and we're going to try to get something else from. Um, but I wouldn't be advising him to retire unless he got hurt. 
if you got badly hurt or anything like that, then, then they'd have to say, look, maybe you might think about things. But I don't see that happening. I think, I think Bork, and I think Borky's last fight was a tough fight. I think that guy shocked everyone that night, the way he boxed on the back foot, and he looked huge, he, he hit with venom. And I th but I thought Borky came through that fight. Yeah, it was a close fight and all, but he came through it. Yeah, big cut, he came through it. And, you know, I think that was stand to him as well, going into this fight. So, yeah, look, made the best man winning that because I'm very, very fond of Graham. I have been. I was there on day one when he made his, when he started his pro career, when he came out to Eddie's gym, because I was training under Eddie at the time. And Borky, I have a close relationship with Borky over the last year since I started working with him. So, again, I think it's a, it's a battle of two good guys. Um, and another fight, that's, another fight that's been approved by the BUI, it's just pending one more meeting. And that will be announced this this week on through our pages. But I'll again give it to you here: is Sean Murray versus Daniel O'Sullivan for the Celtic 154 pound title. Um, great great as, fight, like I think. As, as far as I'm aware, both boys, both lads have approved the fight. They're happy, both are happy to fight. Myself and Pascal just the Pascal's away at the minute. We've discussed the Pascal says, "Yeah, you're happy for the fight." Again, we just sit down and put the last few details together, which is common sense. You know what I mean? And that'll be the. That's them three fights. Um, we are looking for an opponent for Kane Lewis. So if there's anyone in Ireland, that anyone in Ireland that wants to fight Kane Lewis for the Celtic title and get paid in October on October fourth, let us know straight away. But well, at the minute we're looking in Spain, Wales, and Scotland to try to get Kane an opponent because be featherweight. Featherweight. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there, there obviously is other. You know, I guess the problem he has is. If other Irish fighters have fell away from the past domestic level, and Colin Murphy and Kurt Walker, yeah. you know, which would probably, particularly Kurt Walker, probably best step maybe too far at this stage for him. Yeah. But you know, you maybe look at others in the bantamweight division. That's you're obviously really far on Jared Hughes to fight in this card. You've Conor Kerr, maybe even potentially Matty Borda come into the picture as well. But I think he's ideally going to be bantamweight. So yeah. there is other fighters there. I'm probably trying to think off the off the top of my head because you want to just give me this. What maybe you know? I guess you don't want to go to Scotland or some of these ones are going to cost more. But well, look at the one that Colin Murphy had, Jake Turner. Well, uh, yeah. Well, as it stands, we have looked at a few in Scotland, and we are looking at ones in Wales, and we're in Spain as well. Like we are looking, um, and it's not just me looking. I've two or three other matchmakers looking for it as well because it's the second time. It's like Senate, it's all over again. It's the exact same thing I had with Senate, where we had to go look everywhere, and then you to try to get them approved, and there's a bit around that as well, but. You want to try to get Kane as, Kane as he can't just keep fighting journeymen. You know what I mean? If not, we'll have to look at, post, not for this show now, but potentially for maybe the next show or something, bringing in a different organisation and getting them an international belt or something like that because he can't just keep holding them back. Like, kids moving on in his career, I think he's shown everybody how good he is. And that's probably the reason why nobody stepping up. We did have a brief chat with Ian about Conor Kerr, but I believe Friday's didn't sue him. Um, but again, well, I understand what lads with. Um, wanting to have fans and things there, but you're not going to be fighting at 6 o'clock when you're fighting for the title. You're going to be fighting a bit later on. Belfast and Dublin's about two hours, you know, to the Red Cow. It's probably two hours if you might even do it in an hour and 50. So if a lad was working at 5 o'clock, Friday, most lads finish at 4, the, the hour earlier on the Friday. Even if you finished at 5, you could be in Dublin at 7, half 7. You have nine weeks notice. It's, it's not really a stumbling block. If your fans want to be there, they could ask their bosses even, in nine weeks can I finish two hours early? If it meant coming to Dublin early, I don't think it did. The hospital department or a doctor, you know, or something like that. You know? you know, it's not as if he's got you've got half a Belfast coming down, so you have ten thousand people. <laughs> you know what I mean? Looking to come down, and they're all finishing at one o'clock on the Friday. You're you're probably talking at most twenty people, if even, that are working on the Friday that would need to get off a bit early. I don't fall for them excuses. It's to be a champion. It's to pick a belt up. It's to progress your career, and on the on top of that, you're getting a few bob. So you're getting a few bob in the back pocket. Yeah, you sell tickets, you're getting an extra few bob. It's only a small percentage. You know, you're, just, you're not really relying on a particular percentage. You're getting your bit of purse. You're getting the fight for the belt, which is going to push you on higher in your career. Letting the day of the week stand in the way of that. This, this obviously finally touched on obviously tonight, because obviously you're, you're getting a good relationship obviously with, with Conan, obviously, Conan Box, and obviously Drew and Brother on the Ulster Hall card. John Boyd obviously very late notice, and it actually came from my interview with John last week. So yeah. These interviews are working, they're working a treat, and I hope people that sort of fighters aren't going, send, send box tickets, and a meal, we'll get a fight. People are watching the interviews. Jamie obviously seen my interview with John Boyd, and John was like, I'll happily fight again next week. And then obviously I suggested Matty Borland sort of when I knew he was a fight off. But good, obviously, relationship with obviously Colin Box and, and giving John Boyd 
you know, I know John said in the interview last week that it doesn't really matter in the venue, you're just getting in a ring and you're fighting, but you know, he was there at the Queensbury show at the end of June. He's obviously opening the show tonight as well. Like Yeah, no, John's had a he's had a lovely start to his career, John. He boxed in Ulster Hall in uh, March thirtieth, <coughs> boxed in Dublin last Friday. And uh, he's now gonna headline in the arena in his hometown. What could you ask for? Three of the last four Irish shows. He's yeah, that's, but that's the thing. Like you know, what I think about John is a testament to him. First, firstly, I'd like to say thanks to Jamie and Mick. Um, we had asked for a slot in the show, but obviously did so many debutants and all on it. It wasn't a slot, and then once one came available, they gave us it, and we really appreciate that. You know, and we would do the same for them down south if they ever needed lads out, and they have some lads now signed down there. If they ever needed to get lads out, we'd be the exact same. We, that's what it's all about, working together. If Eddie Hearn and Frank Warren can do it, and they're doing it for money, obviously, now there's a big difference in what they're doing it for. But if they can work together, all the promoters in Ireland can work together, and you can make the best shows and make the best fights, and you won't have to be going into Europe all the time to get opponents when you can actually just ring your other colleague that's doing the same job you're doing and make matches and make your life easy and help people out, building a lad on a show close to their town and things like that. So really appreciate the lads for that. John is um, he's a true professional. John weighed in last Friday, last um, Thursday, 71, 71 uh, point something kilos. Boxed outstanding against uh, Dale Arrowsmith. Showed real class in the fight. <clears throat> and I rang him on Sunday. Availability now. Fight away is in the Thursday at 71, 71 and a half kilos. Boy, if Sunday they'd usually be at least 76, 77 kilos at least. John was 72 and a half kilos on Sunday. So I said, do you want to fight next week? He couldn't believe it. Perfect, no problem. Didn't have to lose weight, nothing. He's after weighing in there. Perfect. So that's, that's true to Tessman. And that's why I always would be a strong believer of not doing the big heavy water cuts where you lose four or five kilos in the week of a fight. You know what I mean? I just, I don't, one, I don't, think, I don't, I don't agree with it. But I think there's a, there's a young fella now that's, he was in tip top condition last week perfectly uh, conditioned for six rounds, done a really good six rounds, had a couple of days rest, and went back to the gym light training on Monday, and he's had done a light bit of training this week, and he's still on the same way, and ready to go this week, he's two fights in in eight days, three and all in three months. Was that, was that? Yeah, and he's, fought, and he's fought in Ulster Hall, he's fought in Dublin, and he's fought in the SSE in Belfast, not bad for a Belfast lad, who, you know, who, I met him, I met him nine months ago, and he wasn't boxing, and he was, we were sitting watching boxing, one of the Jer Healy shows, shows, and we we were sitting watching box, sitting watching boxing. I was sitting here, he was sitting over there. I was introduced to him. We had a bit of a chat, and we we sat and had a few beers together. We ended up going into the bar. We spent the night on the jolly up, and uh, met him a week or two later with his father. And we signed the contract, and he became a professional boxer. And now he's he's already boxing Ulster Hall and SSE in his hometown. Like that stuff, kids' dreams are made of, you know. And again, that's thanks to Conlon Boxing because without them putting them shows on, that wouldn't have happened. It, uh, obviously, just speaking on obviously the card tonight, what sort of fights are you sort of looking forward to watching? Obviously, we have a, have a domestic fight. We obviously have like an Anglo sort of Anglo Celtic sort of, and Fergus Conlon, Ashton Brown, obviously from McKenna. I mean, what are you sort of what are you looking forward to watching tonight? Well, the two fights you mentioned, obviously the two main fights in the card, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to them. To be honest with you. Um, I've trained with Tyrone for a long time. I love the guy. I think he's, I think he's brilliant. I think he's brilliant for the sport. Um, and I hope he goes out tonight and he puts that fight to bed now. After the few years he's had of listening to people saying this and that. The other. At the end of the day, Tyrone got the decision in that fight. Whether he won the fight or whether he didn't win the fight, so the, no, it doesn't matter. It, he won. The, he got the decision, so he won the fight. He doesn't pick the winner. He just does his job in the ring and that's what he's doing. So getting social media abuse from your man's fucking family, friends and all of that shouldn't happen because Tyrone doesn't pick the winner. He's not a judge, he's not a ref, he's a boxer. He done his best and that's all he could do and he was given the decision so Tyrone won the fight, simple as that. So I hope tonight he can go out now <clears throat> and do the same again, get the decision, win the fight and then please God move on and get another big fight out of it. Probably, you know, like it's a strange one, the fact that he won a fight and he still fight the person again. Like, it probably maybe, you know, probably go at a completely different angle. And I know he said, obviously, coming back, he's a new hunker and he wants to be a world champion. You know, it's probably the Harold Davis fight, maybe go back one again. You know, religious program, obviously, the Catwell fight was just called off there as well. Maybe look at trying to get revenge for a defeat rather than revenge for a one. I think 
for Tyrone, win tonight. Let's get tonight out of the way. Win that fight and put this to bed. Um, myself personally, I wouldn't have went back and took the fight again because I've beaten him. Good luck to him. Because by the off chance, your man did get, get a win tonight. That's one all. Does he have to go again and do it a third time? Whereas he done it once, he beat him. Away you go. I would have probably went after O'Hara Davis. I think Toronto beats, beats O'Hara Davis. I wasn't impressed with Toronto's performance against O'Hara Davis that, in the final of the team. I, I just felt there was something missing that night. It wasn't a Toronto fight. He didn't, he didn't do the typical Toronto, like stand in the middle of the ring and want the war. And, you know, he just, now, not that I would say Toronto should be doing that all the time because I've seen Toronto, um, wasn't it against uh, Felix? He gave, a, he gave him a boxing lesson that night. You know, I know he went down, but he got up and he gave him a boxing lesson for the rest of the fight and won that fight comfortable. And we've seen the damage he's done since then. So, you know, Tyrone can box. And sometimes I just think his head gets the better of him. I want a war, let's have a war. But, you know, I think against O'Hara Davis, he could have had that war and won the fight, but he didn't. I just, so I think O'Hara Davis would be a great fight for Tyrone to get. I know what I'm saying. He should have won that fight, obviously, but because of that sort of defensive sort of nature, the judges sort of went against him. Where do you sort of, where do you sort of feel in terms of the, you know the Quinn Brown and the Moran O'Neill fights, like particularly the Moran O'Neill fight? It's sort of, I'd probably say for either of them, it wins their best one of their careers. Sort of, it's, it's that sort of nature. It's like, there's a lot of pressure on both of them. Obviously, Owen O'Neill's now made weight, so that's that relief. The monkey's off his shoulder now. You know, I'd say. His biggest fight to date is made weight for. But that's, where, do that, you, where do you sort of look at that? that, that, that that's wrong, though. That, 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 that was wrong. I, the fight was made at the weight was made at. That's fine. But I see. Like, I wish both fighters the best tomorrow. I, I hope Can both I? of them. Oh, tonight, sorry. I hope that both of them put in the performance of their career and made the best man win. And I wish both of them luck. And genuinely, I do wish both of them luck. And I hope the two of them come through the fight it's healthy and safe. But in my opinion, and I should, probably shouldn't have an opinion, but I'm going to give it. I don't think Owen should ever have went below 154. I don't. I think he looked horrendous yesterday on the weighing scales. I thought it looked really, really poor. I don't think he looked healthy. And I'm sure deep down he knows he wasn't healthy. You know, I, I remember, and the reason why I say about the 154 was his last fight up here was supposed to be 154, 156. No, the one against Kemsky. That was supposed to be 156, I think it was, because I had helped make that match because it was supposed to be Dominic, and I said, look, we get a replacement or whatever. And he came in at 158, but I remember seeing him afterwards in Nando's, and he looked very, very daint, and he looked drawn. He didn't look healthy at all. And I looked, and I went, geez, he doesn't look good in the way. And he came over 158 then. To drop, to think he was going to go back to 147, in my opinion, was suicide on his personal, you know, health. and health. Like, he's not built to go to 147. And that showed. And then yesterday he came in at 151, which tested him into him. He obviously forced his gut to get there. But, you know, the fighter will always do what the fighter does. And that's make weight when I have to and fight when I have to. And this fight sounds deadly at 147. I can do 147. And you'll do what you have to do to get there. Well, is getting there healthy? You know? And that's the thing. How much water did you take out? Is there enough water going back in today before the fight? Because if not, slightest tap in the head. Everyone is probably not aware, but the first place the water leaves is your head, and the last place it goes back to is the head. And that's why you see so many people who are weight trained and weighing in, and then the next night if we bump, the slightest tap and they're gone. That's down to water cutting too much weight loss. I just hope that he's he has done the way healthy. To me, he doesn't look like he's done a healthy. I, I hope he's done a healthy. And I hope that his health is the most important thing. Forget the win, the lose, and anything about the boxing, the show. And every boxer on the show's health is more important than anybody. Else on the anything else on the show, um, but I think Owen should look at it and win or lose tonight. Um, I don't think it ends his career. Win or lose, win win, obviously pushes him on. Lose doesn't end his career. Dylan has a great record, um, so it's not as if he's going in and get beaten by a journeyman or something like that. Where you go, where, where does he go from here? No, but I think he should really look at it and go right. Can I be doing? Like, he he looks like he really struggled to make 151. 151 is not a title weight. What's the nearest title weight? 147. Could he have taken another four pounds off? Looking at him yesterday, I don't think so. Now, again, I'm no doctor to say healthy, yeah, he could do another four pounds. I don't think he could have done another pounds. To me, he looked really poor in the way. So, three pounds heavier. Probably would have made him look a little bit better on the scales and wouldn't have had to, like, wouldn't have had to take that extra three pounds off and that might have been the difference in looking healthy and not looking healthy. So, I think the, this team around him need to look at that. 
and say, yeah, it's all going right well, saying, yeah, you'll fight at 147. But in theory, if he wins tomorrow or tonight, is he going to make 146.9 one, or 147 to fight the winner of Declan and Senan for the Irish title? And if he does, is he going to do it healthy? Because at the end of the day, it's all about the health and it's all about him getting out of the ring safe. It's not making the weight. The, ca the weight can't be the biggest job. It can't be. The biggest job is to fight. You have to get into a ring and you have a fella that wants to thump the head off you for eight rounds or ten rounds. That's the biggest job in front of you. Not the weighing scales. The weighing scales is the easy part. I know everyone says, oh, the hardest part. It's not the hardest part. The, the weighing scales is the easiest part. It's just part and part of, the, of your job. You go to train. You train two, three times a day, whatever you do. You eat the right foods two, three times a day. And coming to the weight, you, that's why you accept the fight with enough notice. So you can sit down. You can do your weight. You can do your plan. You can sit down. That's, this is what way I am now. This is what I'm going to be next week, the week after, the week after, because that's what I need to be in the weighing scales. And if that doesn't add up to what the scales should say, well, then you don't take the fight it that way. But the biggest job can't be making weight. It can't be a success story when you make weight and a big cheer and everyone's happy that you've made weight. Sure, that's getting in the ring, you're gone. If your biggest fight is making weight, sure, then you're gone when you get in the ring. So that's my opinion on it. I, um, I hope it's a good fight. You know, um, I would have to look at the fight and say, you know, the winner is going to fight one of our lads, um, again, which will be another great fight. Um, who do I win? I don't know, looking at it like, you know what I mean? I don't want any in particular fella to win because I like both of them, I've got all, I get on with both of them. I have respect for both of them, I have respect for anyone who gets in the ring, but respect, respect for both lads. My main concern tonight would be making sure, obviously, both lads get out of the ring safe, but especially on... I, just I'm hoping that he's hydrated and he's got the right fluids and everything back into him and he can get into the ring healthy tonight and that's that's all you can ask for. Right, well, look, we're just over 41 minutes there obviously um, I'm being cautious of the fact that I, I want to get it uploaded before obviously the fight, fight card starts but look obviously enjoy obviously um, your obviously wee break here in Belfast over the weekend and obviously I'm sure we'll catch up with you come, come October obviously in your, in your next show. 100%, yeah. We'll have the press conference on the Wednesday, the weigh-in on the Thursday. So that'll be the 2nd, the 3rd, and the show will be on the 4th of October. Thanks, man. Mrs. Nose, and I am I'm going missing for a few days. Yeah. But, Jerry, listen, thanks very much for your time, and we'll catch up with you soon. Thank you, Steve.